Hello, everyone. My name is Keith Major. I am the Platform Manager for the Galvanic Applied Sciences Viscosite Viscometer. Today, I will be presenting an introduction to the Viscosite. We will be covering analyzer design, insulation, maintenance, and touching on the measurement theory. Well, the Viscosite is a torsional oscillation sensor. The Viscosite itself is a third generation platform with its past transmitters with over 40 years of installation. Best price to performance ratio due to the ruggedness of the sensor. So the Viscosite sensor is designed for process control. Some of the features of this are hermetically sealed, which means it's welded, closed, no maintenance, no, no O-rings, no replacement parts. The benefit to that is no downtime. Some of the features are a sensor shield, to protect against solids going down the pipeline in the tank, wherever it may be uh, mounted. And the benefit to that, obviously, is no damage, no time delay, etc. Another feature is Teflon coating. This is needed in case of the material's propensity to stick to stainless steel. In this case, with the Teflon coating, it won't do that. However, you got to maintain certain temperatures for this to be uh, effective. Custom configuration, most flange sizes needed we could do. Um, and then obviously the sensor to meet the user needs. Simplifies insulation, not much work on the user end. Rugged materials, handles 400 C, 2500 PSI. Now the rugged materials standard is 316 stainless steel. Uh, have done Hastelloy C, uh, et cetera, can do many. Some of the key applications are uh, refinery and the vis breaking, also some sulfur monitoring applications, petrochemical roofing asphalt, both raw asphalt and as, as well as filled asphalt, uh, fertilizer, P2S5, pesticide, et cetera, uh, vestment casting wax, um, pharmaceutical, anything from gel cap, uh, gel tab, um, coating to uh, toothpaste to hand cream, et cetera. Uh, food, ketchup, anything that, that needs a viscosity measurement in the food application. Chemical, polymers, silicone, paints, inks. Uh, ceramic cement is a big one. Uh, most people think ceramic cement can't be measured viscosity or cement in general, but if the particles are small enough, it becomes a quote unquote slurry and can be measured quite easily. Now, viscosity is the measure of fluid's internal friction, uh, and, and typically the shear rate or, or the shear dependency uh, is based upon the material's reaction to the shear stress, or in, in cases of, of pumps, uh, et cetera, mixers and tanks, stuff like that. Some of the, some of the materials affect are bingham, pseudoplastic Newtonian dilatant. Now Bingham is, is kind of a plastic and it's similar to uh, shear thinning. I mean, an example of a Bingham would be uh, toothpaste, uh, mayonnaise and, and stuff like that. Pseudoplastic is a shear rate thinning. Um, basically, the faster you flow it, the, the lower the number. Newtonian, a purely Newtonian material is not affected by shear rate at all. And dilatant is shear rate thickening. And that's basically as you flow it, as you mix it, it gets thicker. Some of the key components and how this sensor actually works, if you look over to the right, you see the cross arm um, and then the electromagnetic coils. Now in this, there are four electromagnetic coils, two pairs. One would be considered the driver side, and one would be considered the detector side. Uh, they are controlled by the viscosite transmitter. And what they do is they oscillate that cross arm back and forth. And if you see the, the ball on the left, creates a, a shear wave, sine wave, uh, very small um, amplitude. But that is what is actually happening. You can, you can feel it sometimes, but you can't necessarily see it moving. Again, like I said, the drive coil, the detector coil, um, the drive is kept at a constant amplitude, the detector coil responds to changes in viscosity. So what happens is as the constant amplitude uh, that's maintained through the transmitter is diminished by sample touching the sensor, the detector coils like, respond to that change 
increased power, therefore giving you um, a viscosity result on your display. Some of the some other of the features of the transmitter are uh, temperature compensation that is programmable and and quick example of this is if your process goes from 90 to 110 say degrees C you want to target uh, a temperature in the center that's what temperature compensation will do for you so regardless of what temperature the, the flow is at the material is at the process is at we can target that 100 degrees C temperature density compensation this sensor takes density into account when it's placing its measurement and we can compensate that out either manually or automatically. Automatically would require an input from a densitometer on the customer's end, but it's a real-time calculation, always removing it to either display center poise, center stokes, et cetera. It's been a field proven me measurement since um, 1986. Some of the sample requirements, we can do up to 2,500 PSI um, and up to 400 C. I've never seen processes up to the 400 C mark, but it can go there if it has to. Uh, the material of construction, again, as I stated previously, 316 stainless steel, past alloy, duplex, et cetera. Uh, the sensor tip is basically decided by what the viscosity range would be. Insulation uh reactor tank pipe it really doesn't matter we're pretty flexible can do anything some of the special ones we have are sanitary um obviously for the food or pharmaceutical markets and again like the teflon coated that i mentioned the transmitter and the sensor is has a interconnect cable uh that can span up to 300 meters a uh, thousand feet so if necessary the sensor can go into a hazardous area um, the transmitter can go into control room and general purpose if necessary. The rod um, can go up to a million centipoise. The sphere can go up to 100,000 centipoise. The cylinder, well, we have two cylinders. One is one and a half inches by one and a half inches, and that is the, uh, the one that can go to 10,000 centipoise. And then we have a two and a half long by one and a half, and that can go to um, 1,000 centipoise. Uh, User-defined limits are what I mentioned by the density calculation, and they are, as you see there, centipoise, millipascal seconds as well um, as centisodes. If you see the two pictures on the left are different franchise sizes, different models necessarily, but the tip is the same, which would be the one and a half by one and a half up to 10,000 centipoise. The third picture there is a sphere, which would be 100,000, and as well as a type of um, sanitary fitting on there, sanitary flange mounting. Um, I believe that's a Tuchenhagen flange. And then, then the sensor on the right is the larger cylinder. Um, as you see, those fins there are, for, are a type of cooling. And a larger cylinder would be the 1,000 centipoid max design. Teflon coating. Obviously, this is... Um, a green sensor there, a green Teflon coating. We have green and black as well. Uh, as you see, this material um, that I'm that I'm measuring there is would stick to the stainless steel. It wouldn't be gummy. It would just adhere to it like um, kind of like a milkshake, I guess you would say. Uh, and as you see there, picture on the right with the Teflon coating, uh, there's no sticky, no nothing. It just drips right off. The Picture to the lower right is the sensor shield. Uh, the picture above it is a sphere sensor straight. The picture to the left is a sensor that was damaged. Um, with the sensor guard, if that damage happened to be from a uh, large chunk that is either in the tank or in the pipe that tries to wedge itself by that sensor, uh, therefore causing a bend, that sensor shield will protect it uh, that chunk will basically try to wedge itself by the shield, not by the sensor. The enclosure for the transmitter uh, basically is a fiberglass standard um, NEMA 4X. We can go with a stainless steel. We can go with a stainless steel if it needs to be certified. Um, and the temperature range is 0 to 60 degrees C. 
uh, can be controlled by 24 volts DC, powered, I mean, by 24 volts DC or 90 to 265 AC. The certification, the transmitter, um, Division Two, Class One, Division Two, uh, with that would be with the stainless steel uh, field certification on that. No purge required. The sensor can go up to Division One, um, and that that as well field certification. Uh, the ATEX, the IECEX, are on the sensor only, and that is a Zone One uh, up to a Zone One uh, certification. Some of the features of the electronics, uh, as you see the open and closure in the, in the fiberglass box on the right, some of the connections in the center, um, has three analog outputs, which are also switchable from four to 20 milliamps to, to uh, zero to 10 volts uh, DC. Um, one analog input, this is for the densitometer that I mentioned previously, um, Modbus RS-232, RS-45, Ethernet, uh, USB and then two uh, solid state relays with high and low on both. As you see to the right, the, the display, four lines, keypad underneath. Um, the, the display can, can pretty much display everything that's on the left. Obviously it has four lines, so you can do four lines at once. Um, and like I said, you can display viscosity and temperature compensated viscosity as well. So you can do a real-time measurement there as well as your target viscosity uh, or target temperature compensation. Couple of, um, couple of pictures of mountings here. Uh, on the left, you see that's roofing asphalt there. Um, and the one on the right is, I believe, roofing asphalt as well, a little different location. Uh, as you see here, this, in this particular case, that asphalt is coating that sensor there, um, but it does, Teflon coating would not work in this situation, uh, which is one thing you gotta realize with Teflon coating. Um, the Teflon coating I use is, has a max of 450F, I believe. This particular process, is right about there, maybe a little bit less. But the problem is, is, is for a filled coating, for a filled asphalt, which has limestone in it, it becomes slightly caustic. Uh, Teflon coating will not work. And you see here the coating on this sensor says that, or someone would say, well, how's that gonna work? Well, I've been told by them um, that once the process gets going again, the heated up of the asphalt, um, basically takes this off and they're back to where they were. Uh, it's just as the, the, tef, the um, asphalt cools, it, it does create this kind of coating, but no, no problems in their measurement. Some more installations on the left is a tank. On the right is a big tray with that, that thick piece of steel, I guess it is, all the way across and it's mounted to that. And this is um, just taking its measurement. This is a drilling application. Drilling application, basically they, they run the drilling mud or, or the oil or what's used there and they measure the viscosity to make sure it's maintained. Um, this is basically a movable skid. So it's on wheels, they get a truck, they, they take it and they, they hook it up, they wheel it over to where it's got to be mounted. Uh, it's connected flange to flange, op valves are open, material flows through, and measurements taken. On the left is a, a huge pipe. Uh, we are going perpendicular to flow in that particular case, and I'm going to get into that as well. Um, this size of this pipe makes that feasible. Uh, I'll just share, I have had customers go perpendicular to flow before and I'll share my concerns with that. But again, I have had people do it, so it's not too big of a concern. On the right is a tank. Obviously it has surface mixers there and you wanna make sure if it's going in that situation uh, to be avoided or, or to obviously not go where those mixers are gonna hit it. And you see there, it looks, doesn't look it. 
actually looks like one of those mixers could hit it, but they will not. It has worked, and they are going right above it and not hitting the sensor. So I'll just explain the sensor to the left there. Um, has an angled neck on it. This is a rod, would be very high viscosity measurements. The angle is basically to follow the uh, angle of the pipe as if it were mounted to the setup on the right. You see the setup on the right has a neck extension, but it's a flat surface, which is primarily how they all are, which is not, not a big deal, which is fine. The angle basically creates a better um, flow path for the material. But in essence, what we want with that neck extension is to take up stagnant flow, take up dead space there, because if we don't do that, two things. One, that measuring portion of the sensor, the half inch down to the ball, will be up higher, not in representative flow. Uh, the other thing is like it says there, stagnant flow, which can basically uh, change levels. Um, and you know harden up cool off and these are the kinds of things that the neck extension was was put on there to avoid uh, and as you see the flow rate this is the the target flow rate this is what we want flow rate coming up into the sensor and then exiting out one other thing about the mounting i just want to touch on is um you want it significant distance away from pumps heat exchangers like it says there um primarily because vibrations you don't want uh a lot of vibrations you don't want movement in the pipe um due to the torsional oscillation of this sensor uh it's going to want to move the pipe if there's any flex in it uh any type of sway as you see here here's another picture of a mounting now it is it looks like the picture on the right and it is but the, the one difference in this, this sensor does not have a neck extension on it. So if you look where that the material flows up and then makes that right hand turn, the sensor is not far enough down in the material. So therefore they get a lot of stagnant flow up top. What you'd like to see is that top portion be lowered down a little bit to put that sensor, the measuring portion of the sensor, more in the, in the flow of the material representative flow etc um too much too much uh opportunity for like i said before different reading noisy readings due to the changing levels of viscosity and that stagnant flow there i touched on vibration a little bit as you see here the 600 is basically where our sensors are not a lot of um vibration that we can tolerate however most applications are in tanks. Most applications are in huge three inch, even two inch piping uh, is big. So the key thing there, vibration tolerance is pipe and rigidity of the setup. If it's rigid, if you can't move it, then we will be fine. So as you see to the picture to the right, there is tank mounting option, bypass mounting option, um, the tank is the primary one suggested because it is uh, obviously tanks are very large, vibrations minimal. Um, the bypass is the second option because that is uh, good for maintenance, um, good for control of the flow to the sensor. Uh, as you see with the small vibrations there, some of the options are. Uh, you know, flexible piping in and out, therefore dampening the vibrations going through. But again, with the bypass situation, with the tank situation, even a lot of direct pipeline situations, there's not uh, a lot of uh, dampening needed. So you see here, along with the annual inspection of the sensor, et cetera, if you wanted to inspect seals, gasket seals um, but there's really no maintenance required there's no o-rings that you need to change on the sensor itself so this is primarily a mounting and seal to the pipe uh, etc as you see on the picture on the right there this is the viscosity that i use our the sensor itself does not require any maintenance 
Uh, I've had had I've had had customers in there running sensors for 20 years, 25 years, and not really had an issue. Um, so, if I have had customers ask me, well, does it need to be recalibrated? And my answer to that is no. It does not need to be recalibrated. If you have a process in place, if you have procedures that you need uh, to to maintain, my suggestion is remove it after a year verify calibration and if all is good put it in but mainly if you do not doubt the reading you're getting leave it alone okay so the sensor itself is a rugged sensor um but it is a has a little has a hollow sheath there so if you see the picture on the left uh that's how it should be carried that's how it should be mounted from the back end if you look at the picture on the right, if you hold it by that sensor, these things can weigh up to 25, 30, 35 pounds. Uh, that will put a slight dent, slight bend in the sensor, therefore requiring recalibration, and you don't want to go that way. So carry it by the way on the on the left. So we have local on-site startup. We have local on-site uh, service. Uh, training, etc. Anything that's needed, we can come and do. Uh, from the factory, we can do FATs, we can do inspections. Again, we can do field certifications, etc. Remote troubleshooting is something that we are very versed in as well. So why Visco site? Maintenance needs. There is none. It is basically plug it in, mount it up, and let it go. It will read your viscosity and you will have no more sample grabbing, um, et cetera. Sensor design and material is basically customer-based, easy installation. Um, some of the disadvantages of uh, others are, are need a need to provide or need to purchase a sample setup uh, with the sensor to mount up to customers' existing piping. Ours does not have that. Um, hazardous area transmitter. Um, Again, up to Division Two, uh, sensor up to Division One, um, with the transmitter, no air purge sensor, no air purge. Uh, what if scenarios? If there's an upset condition to the process, say temperature goes wacky, we can handle up to high temperature, high pressure. Um, other units can can you can run into real issues, sensor damage, removing sensor, either replacing or rebuilding or whatever the case. <clears throat> Um, if you have buildup on the sensor, if you have buildup on the um, in the in the piping, uh, big chunks, sensor shield protection will do that. Uh, we could also design a clean in place if that's necessary as well. Um, we can go in all the dirty, nasty applications uh, because we have no moving parts. We are it's totally hermetically sealed. Uh, basically, like I said, just mount. Make sure there's gaskets for sealing uh, to the pipe and good to go. Others, moving parts, damage, replacement, a um, lot of headache, a lot of work. The upgrade benefits, the VS600, the VS400, and the 1810. Those are, um, there's no certifications. You have to zero the sensor in the pipe. Um, when the sensor is mounted into the pipe and you know, before any process flowed, empty pipe, empty tank, whatever the case, uh, there's going to be some positive offset uh, on the display, and that will need to be zeroed out. Now, typically, you could just um, do a uh, hardware or software zero through the front panel and, and get that. But now you look, now you have to run into the to the point of um, process temperature going up and therefore changing your zero because obviously higher temperature affects the metal affects the coils inside the sensor and you have to zero that out so typically what we do is recommend you do a zero at or as close to process temperature as you can get it so the visco site comes in a nema 4x box standard zero to 60 degrees c uh can be in division two division two areas no purge um, and sensor zero is not required. Due to the way the sensor sets up, or the transmitter sets up the sensor, um, it basically finds its own zero and sets up a quote-unquote tuning feature to find its own zero. 
in the um, outputs, communications on the VSCO site are 4 to 20 milliamps, Modbus, Ethernet, GUI. So the measurement certainty for this VSCO site is uh, rapid, rapid return on investment. Um, I've worked with multiple customers in the past that, you know, would, would take grab samples and, I mean, it, grab samples can be pretty time consuming. Um, and we offer real time measurements, real time viscosity, you know, upset conditions or potential upset conditions can be caught ahead of time, uh, therefore allowing operators to make the necessary adjustments to keep on, to keep quality. Uh, of the product moving. Um, we can get measurement every second update. Uh, we have over 40 years in difficult applications and, and I've been to some of those and they are quote unquote difficult applications, nasty stuff. And we, and we come out shining. We come out measuring perfectly every time. So if you have any questions about this webinar, this information that I've, uh, laid out for you. Um, obviously, the Galvanic sales team, Ian Tell, Selwyn Pandian, Michael Barnett, and Michael Milam can be uh, contacted with any questions. Uh, my, me as well, I'm the platform manager um, or the local representative or authorized distributor in your area. Thank you for the time.